Hi all, Andy again from Solar Reviews and today I wanna to talk about the five tricks to getting the best deal when you buy solar panels. At number five, buy the solar panels, don't lease them. When you buy the solar panels, you retain the tax credit available rather than the leasing company and also you don't get a lien on your home that becomes a problem when you go to sell your home. And really that's the biggest problem with solar leases. They're called third party owned solar leases and they can either be a lease with a monthly fee or what's called a power purchase agreement where you pay so much per kilowatt hour for the power they produce. Either way, the leasing company retains ownership of them. They get the tax credits. They, you have a lien over your house and so anyone that comes in to buy your home has to sign off and take over your lease contract. Now most people that want to buy your home, people used to like leasing because it was the first zero down financing option that was available for solar panels and so a lot of people signed up for these zero down leases. Uh, but it has caused lots of problems when people have gone to sell their homes in transferring those leases across. It also so happens that many of the companies that favour leasing as their model um, are probably some of the solar companies. They tend to be very large national solar companies. They're some of the companies I would probably least like to personally um, deal, deal with. And it, it's fun, funnily enough, two guys that work at Solar Reviews, Lockie and Evan, they both bought houses that had uh, solar panels on them that were part of leases and both of them were very dissatisfied with the outcome. At one point I think Lockie, I won't mention the companies because it, it doesn't matter, but at one point Lockie had a string down on his system for like six or eight weeks and couldn't get anybody to do anything about it. In the other case Evan wanted to vary his system and that he was quoted a ridiculous amount of money to do it, like probably three times more than what that system's actually worth to buy today. So. It's leasing, not my favourite option. Buying is great. If you don't have the money up front, that's fine. There are a million solar loan products. With a solar loan product, you buy the panels off the installer and the job off the installer and you just pay the loan back. The beauty of that is there's much more uh, flexible loan terms available. There's short term loans if you want to pay it back over only a few years. There's longer term ones if you want to pay it over 5, 10, 15. There's even 20 year loans in the market. So, And some really good solar loan providers, Mosaic Solar, um, Sunlight, yeah, uh, quite a few. And also home equity line of, lines of credit available now. The second thing is find a local installer. The reason being is that on our site, there's many, many tens of thousands of reviews of solar companies. Typically we find the local installer having a much better review score than large corporates or national corporates. So we're not talking the very small solar companies. So we tend to say that you should ensure that they've been in business for five years. Uh, check their uh, licensing and insurance. Uh, certainly you can use the contractor check website uh, in your state um, to check that um, they're licensed. And you know, look for ones with good reviews and I would also look for a company that employs their own install crews. Uh, I think that's really quite important. So look for a local company in business five years probably ideally i would say between 15 and say 100 employees in that sort of range size beyond that it gets very very hard to deal with customer service um, so that's why i think that sort of company tends to have a, a better reputation the third tip to getting the best deal when buying solar panels is stick with the top 10 brands of solar panels. There's really no need to go outside those. And the reason I say that is because within those top 10, there's panels that are very, very good like SunPower and LG, Rec Solar, uh, Panasonic, say, that are more expensive, you know, but are very good. And there's also, within that top 10, there are also very, very good tier one Chinese made, or well, mainly Chinese made panels. Brands like Longy Solar, Trina, Canadian Solar, which despite the name's actually a, mainly a Chinese manufacturer, uh, Jinko Solar, JA Solar, companies like that. So if you stick with those 10 brands, and if you Google 
just best brands of solar panels, you'll find our website solarreviews.com. If you um, look on our YouTube channel, you'll see that we've made videos on most of those brands uh, about it. So there's really no need, even if you're a very value conscious um, shopper and are really wanting to prioritize low cost um, over other things, then even in that top 10 you can find a solution that that works and all of those companies are quite bankable um, and that's what you really lose when you go to a second or third tier manufacturer you lose the bankability that that company will be around to support you over the 25 year life so stick to the top 10 brands in terms of inverters you won't be offered a lot of choice uh, there are rapid shutdown rules that mean that usually residential systems have to be either micro inverters or optimizers so you really only have Tigo M phase and solar edge really is your options and I wouldn't really go outside probably those three if you are able to use a string inverter if it's a ground mount or something like that and my preference would be to use a string inverter less electronics usually means less faults on a job uh, then you know Fronius or SMA would be my choice the second most important tip for getting, when it really comes down to it, for getting a good deal, is to take advantage of knowing the way solar jobs are financed. And what that is, is that to go to your sol local solar company and ask for a price which includes a loan option. So you get, they'll give you a price for the system and they'll say, well, and here's a loan for it from XYZ uh, Finance Company. What you then do is you say, all right, I know that in that loan, your finance provider is charging you what's called an origination fee or a dealer fee, um, it's sometimes referred to, of around 10%. Now the better the loan terms are, the higher that origination fee. So if you, let's say it's a really good, it's a 20 year 2% loan, which is probably about the best I've ever seen you know, for a, for a solar load. It's not really economic for a finance company to offer that to you. And the reason they do offer that to you is probably in that case, the dealer, the solar company itself is probably giving maybe up to, in that case, 20 or 25% of the job fee to the finance company up front for them to finance it on such low terms. So if it's a more normal loan, you know, like a 10 year sort of 4.9% sort of loan, something like that, then that dealer fee might be six or eight, more like six or eight percent. Now those dealer fees are never really discussed and I don't really understand why solar companies aren't just honest with customers and say well we yeah we have to pay dealer fees that's why you get such good finance. Um, I think they just want all the jobs to go through and they don't want to raise objections or anything that'll annoy customers but you know I think most customers are probably sophisticated enough to understand that if they're getting offered money cheaper than at home loan rates somebody might must be paying the fiddler so you know what I would do is then go back to them and say look I'll pay cash or I'll sort out my own finance but I know there's a dealer fee in that and whether that dealer fee be 8% 10% 12% I would ask them to take off the dealer fee because they were going to give that money to the finance company anyway so that's a, a trick um, you know sometimes you can save yourself you know 10% on the cost of a system and my final most important tip to ensuring you buy solar panels or the best system, the best solar panels and become a happy solar customer over a long time is do not take the cheapest quote. The cheapest quote will nine times out of 10 either be on inferior gear or it's a solar company that basically takes the attitude, I'm gonna come into the market and I've seen hundreds of these do this and then disappear two, three, four years later. I'm gonna come into the market because solar jobs are big ticket, they're quite a lot of money and compared to some other home services, there's probably more margin in solar still than what there are in other things. So I'm gonna come into the market, I'm gonna sell heaps of job, I'm gonna grab that margin and then I'm gonna wind up my business three years later and start a different one. So what you really want, more than a cheap price, and keep in mind the tax credit's paying for a, a chunk of your system anyway. So 
you know, whatever savings you make by buying a cheap one, you're only hanging on to 20, 74% of that saving. You know, 26%, you're just getting less tax credit. So um, you really want a company that will support you. You will need service from your solar company over the life of it. And if you're with the, the wrong side of company, there are definitely solar companies out there whose whole business model is to get in quick, sell jobs, you get the margin up front, you, your real cost in doing a solar job as a company is obviously you have to buy the equipment, you have to fund the installation process and the permitting and the inspections and all that sort of stuff. But then you've also got to provide service over 25 years. There are a whole heap of solar companies that just ignore that last bit. They're not even intending to. They're going to, um, you know, they're going to get in, sell a heap of jobs and wind up. And so that's why I'm saying don't go with the cheapest quote. You may be fine, having said that, you know, like, I can't, no, there's no certainties in life. There may be some guys out there who are really, really good, very, very efficient, have a very low cost operation, and they can be below that 260 a watt sort of mark on price and still be a good viable business. Uh, however, one, the cheaper you get, the more likely it is that they're just trying to make a margin now and ignore the 25 year support obligation they're taking on by selling you a job. So that's my number one tip. Good luck with it. If you want to investigate the economics of solar and you haven't already done so, then head on over to solarreviews.com slash solar dash calculator. It's a completely open solar estimator. From just the amount you spent on your last month's bill, it can tell you how many panels you need, how much power they'll produce, what the system will likely cost based on the average of local prices for solar systems of that size. Uh, it'll show you your solar production over the course of a day and over the course of a year. And it'll also actually model your electricity usage. It's very clever that it can do that from just knowing your most recent month's bill. It can actually model your electricity use both over the course of a day and also the course of a year. So that'll basically give you all the economics of solar. You can play around with the, ins uh, the assumptions on that calculator about what you think utility price inflation might be in the future because that affects savings a lot uh, and oh and quite a number of other things you can play with there if the economic stacks up where you live and for uh, your power use of your home then you can also request quotes uh, from local solar companies through that. Really that's where Solar Reviews comes in. We've developed a rating system for solar companies, our Solar Reviews expert rating score. And when we put you in touch with solar companies, we look for those same things that I've talked about. You know, local, right size, employ their own installation crews, and wherever possible, we connect you with the good guys in solar. And really, that's what I want Solar Reviews to be known for, and that's what I'm proud of, that we've created an ecosystem of seven or 800 solar companies that really do meet most of the criteria, or in most cases, all of the criteria, of what we think makes a good solar company. So good luck to you all and we'll see you next time.